generally speaking, uh, in this country, a lot of uh, environmentally problematic facilities tend to be located in places where poor folks live. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Ankur Shah and this channel is all about environmental and cultural issues and what we can do to help solve them. I'm trying to grow this channel and create informative and actionable content for you, so please do like and share this video and subscribe to the channel for more. For decades, poor minority communities have been at risk of high levels of environmental pollution. Some of the factors causing this are hazardous facilities, extractive activities, toxic waste dumps, or just neglect. This conversation is absolutely important in a time when movements like Black Lives Matter are trending, and I think it is ignored by the mainstream media. Here are some quick facts which depict stark racial disparities and environmental and health outcomes in the United States. Studies from 2012 and 2016 find that Black people are exposed to about 1.5 times more particulate matter than white people. Particulate matter shortened as PM is the sum of solid and liquid matter suspended in the air and can consist of dust, soot, smoke, and pollen. Asthma rates in Black children are nearly double those of white children. These higher rates are attributed to higher pollution exposure, higher smoking rates, and poorer infrastructure. Hispanic communities face rates of chlorine exposure, which are double those of white communities, and this can lead to diminished cardiac function. In the time of the pandemic, this discussion is more relevant than ever. Despite being a minority in most states, the Black population suffers from a disproportionate share of COVID-related deaths. The green bar shows the percentage of Black people in the state population, whereas the red bar shows the percentage of COVID-related deaths, which are of Black people. This graph is a result of disproportionate hypertension, obesity, asthma, and lung disease rates, some of which are due to higher air pollution in their communities. This is just the tip of the iceberg, all of which brings us to the concept of environmental justice. As defined by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, environmental justice is the fair treatment and meaningful involvement of all people, regardless of race, color, national origin or income with respect to the development, implementation, and enforcement of environmental laws, regulations, and policies. In simple words, communities should have a clean and healthy environment, no matter what. The birth of the environmental justice movement in the U.S. took place in Warren County, North Carolina in 1982. The state government had decided to dump 60,000 tons of soil contaminated with toxic PCB waste in the county. PCBs stand for polychlorinated biphenyls, and they're known to cause cancer in animals and humans. PCBs even mimic some hormones in our bodies and can cause neurological damage. Coming back to Warren County, it had an African-American majority population. And of course, they were furious that their state government decided to dump a toxic landfill in their county. We will not allow Warren County to become a dump site. Protesters lay in front of 10,000 truckloads of contaminated PCB soil. And during a six week trucking opposition with collective, direct and nonviolent action, over 550 arrests took place. Warren County protests were described as the largest civil disobedience in the South since Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. marched through Alabama. It was the first marriage in American history between environmentalism and civil rights. The Warren County protests also led to a term, a new phrase called environmental racism. Now the questions are, does environmental racism really exist on a systemic and even a global level? What are the root causes of minority communities experiencing a disproportionate burden of pollution? Most importantly, what can we do to help these communities? I'll do my best to answer these questions in my next video, so please stay tuned by hitting that subscribe button. And in the meantime, I have linked resources and studies for you in the description. You can learn more about environmental justice the history, and even some communities from those resources. And I'll talk about a few examples in my next video too. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. If you have any thoughts, questions, or comments, please do type them below. And if you found this video useful or informative, then please do like and share this video. Subscribe to the channel for more content, and I hope we can all learn about environmental justice together.
So thank you so much for watching again, and I will see you next time. All right, bye.